We got some breaking news into the HQ. Washington Wizards trading Bradley Beal to the Phoenix Suns for Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, and draft compensation. Our NBA insider Bill Ryder confirms as part of the deal Beal's agreed to waive his no trade clause. He spent the first 11 years of his career in Washington after being selected third in the 2012 NBA draft. He's averaged 22 points per game in that span, but after missing the playoffs the past two seasons and a new regime in the front office in D.C., it was time for a change. In Matt Ishbia's short time owning the Suns, he's now added Beal, traded for Kevin Durant last season, all the build around all-star Devin Booker. And here is uh, CBS Sports NBA insider Bill Ryder. Uh, Bill, some quick reaction to this deal. Where does this put the Suns in relation to the newly crowned Denver Nuggets in the Western Conference? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, they're certainly neck and neck, Russ, and I think it, it will test the idea of whether or not you can win an NBA championship when you lack chemistry, because obviously these guys have not played together, and when you lack depth. They had to give away the little depth they had for Kevin Durant, and whatever remains is now going to go to Washington as part of this deal, I'm told. And so talking to folks in that Suns organization, they feel like having a triumvirate of Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Bradley Beal. I mean, that's three-fifths of an all-star team right there will make up for whatever challenges there are filling out the roster and as these guys get used to each other. But as you noted, the Denver Nuggets aren't just defending champions. They're the model from the other perspective. They've been together for years. They know and like each other. They built that team mostly organically. So I think they're probably the Suns a little bit behind Denver, but it's going to be a test of two different ideologies, two different approaches to how you build a championship winner. Look, people around basketball know all about Bradley Beal and what he's capable of. For the people who don't follow it, as closely on a day-to-day -day basis. What is Beal bringing to this Suns lineup? When he's healthy, and, and he has not been healthy for the entirety of his career, including last year, limited in the 50-game range, but when he's healthy, this is a player who's capable of scoring 30 points a game, creating his own shot, taking over games. Now, he's done that for the entirety of his time in the NBA with a Wizards team that has mostly been an afterthought. And when we've thought of them, Russ, it's been at the bottom of that pecking order, barely getting to the playoffs and not lasting very long. So when you couple him with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant, it's an insane amount of offensive firepower. He is good enough to be one of the best offensive players Bradley Beal in the NBA. Not sure he's ever gotten that credit outside of NBA insider and fanatic fan circles because he's played for a mediocre to bad team. But now that you pair him with KD and with Devin Booker, at least on the offensive end, it is hard to see how teams are going to stop these guys because both players, not both players, all three guys, are capable of being good enough to command a double team. He can't do that, in part because it's not practical, in part because there's only five guys, not six, on, on the floor. So he's going to be an absolute machine, and I think the casual fan is going to get a real look at why Bradley Beal, at least around the NBA, has been considered one of the sport's best scorers for a long time. Look, the Wizards have sort of been hanging on to mediocrity for a long time, and I don't think I'm being harsh by saying that. Is this a definitive sign with the new management in town? Like, hey, we're going to take a couple steps back here so that maybe we can start making steps forward? Is that how to read it? Yeah, and I think also there's just a political dynamic in NBA front offices when you bring in new front office folks. Michael Winger is going to run as president of basketball operations. They brought in an entire new front office. And I think you're right. This gives them the opportunity to do the reset and to say this hasn't worked. As you noted, they've been mired in mediocrity at best over the course of their time with Bradley Beal. That's a very long time. This is the chance to restart. It's also worth noting that Bradley Beal, when they extended him, got a no trade clause, which is extraordinarily rare. He's the guy. He's the only guy in the NBA that had a straight no trade clause. So that gave him an enormous amount of leverage in this deal, in this situation. So the Wizards found themselves between a rock and a hard place. They did not have a good enough team, even with Bradley Beal, to be relevant. And yet in moving Bradley Beal, they were never going to get the price that that kind of a player should command because he could nix any trade of any kind. So he could make sure that there wasn't too much coming back in return, that wherever he went wasn't competitive. He was always going to dictate terms. So you add it all up, it was time for Washington to start over, get what they could, and see what they can do in the years ahead. Well, it certainly sounds like Bradley Beal and the Phoenix Suns got what they wanted, and now we've got new odds, by the way, because of this trade to win the NBA title. And let's take a look at those odds as they move. With the Denver Nuggets still the preseason favorites right now to win the NBA title, the Suns now the third favorite behind the Celtics at plus 575. They're at the second best odds in the West. The Celtics still with the best odds in the East. You cool with that? The Suns plus 575. Nuggets still the betting favorite at plus 450.
Yeah, I think, it, I, th I think it makes sense. I mean, Denver, we saw win a championship largely behind Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray, but their depth, Bruce Brown, other guys, Michael Porter Jr. toward the end of that series. I mean, a, a host of depth, I think, helped the Nuggets get there. It's hard to see how the Suns have that kind of depth. Phoenix has to be healthy. Bradley Beal and Kevin Durant have not been able to stay healthy over the last few years. But if those guys are healthy and they figure out how to bring in some players that can contribute, it'll be largely on, on league and veteran minimums, uh, Russ. But you can do that. Durant plus Booker plus Beal. I mean, that's as good a big three offensively as I can remember in the NBA. So it would it would track. There are some question marks, but they're going to be one of the two or three or four teams most likely if things go well to hoist the, that Larry O'Brien trophy a year from now. Man, that is a big three in Phoenix. Two thirds of that big three have had injury issues pretty much for the last several years in Durant and Bradley Beal. It's paper thin margins in the NBA, but that is a big move. That is our NBA insider. Bill Ryder. Bill, thank you so much for the insight. All right, so here it is. Bradley Beal with the Wizards for 11 seasons. Second most all-time points behind Elvin Hayes in Washington basketball history. Third best assist man. Second best steals man. First in threes. Bradley Beal has been the Wizards ever since, I'd say, the end of the Gilbert Arenas era there in D.C. It's been Bradley Beal time, and that time is over. Beal time is moving to the Valley of the Sun to play with the Phoenix Suns.